Hello friends, my name is Ron. This is As the Spirit Moves. I'm glad to be with you today to share a story. The name of the story is A Hog Named Brutus. That's right, A Hog Named Brutus. This story is about a young man who works in the city. He's a young man, he always enjoyed being outside, working outside and, and doing outside work. The situation came that he went to the big city to seek his fortune. And as seeking his fortune, he was stuck in traffic day in, day out. The city had gotten to him. He was so burned out. So there's a weekend, he decided to take, on Saturday, to take a drive in the country road, down the old dirt road. He just needed to get some solitude, some reasoning. But take, take some time out to enjoy just driving down the old road. He came across this farm and he seen the old man on the farm sitting there on the porch in a rocking chair, rocking back and forth. He noticed the hogs that the man had. He had small ones, big ones, medium. It was a hog farm. I seen the old man sitting there so relaxed, sipping iced tea. He decided to drive, pull in a driveway, walk up to the old man, just to have a friendly visit. The old man offered him some iced tea, and he sat down to talk with him. He started telling the old, the old farmer about his life in the city. Uh, he was wrapped up in it, and it's so, so tired, the struggle. Of that type of life. The old farmer said, Is this, what do you think of my farm? And, and the young man said, well, It looks wonderful. I mean, just absolutely wonderful. Um, you got all this set up and your farm looks happy. It's, I think it'd be a proud man to have this type of farm. The old man says, You see me relaxing on the porch, but this is something rare. My work is out there in the pig pen. I got to go out there every day, and he says, I got to take care of them. They look up to me to, to make sure that the pens are clean. If you don't clean the pens, they're going to stink really bad. And just to fortify uh, the storage place, make sure there's straw, some hay, and make sure that they are really good, happy critters. The pig, piglets. Is but it's, it's, I, I got one problem though. Is my problem is a big hog. His name is Brutus. He's a problem from day one. He's big and he's angry and he's meaner than a junkyard dog. Is every day I go out there, I got battle with Brutus. Is I got to uh, get him cornered up and make sure he stays in that corner till I get done. Is he's mean a hog. He said, ran me over one day, and he ran me over. He's danced on my back with all glory, and he, I had to crawl out of there as soon as I could. It nearly killed me. So the man, you know, man says, you know, I wouldn't mind if I could have a farm like this. I, you know, I have some savings. Are you interested in selling? The old farmer says, I'm, I'm old now. He says, uh. At my age, it gets harder and harder to get out there and mess with Brutus every day. He says, I can't sell him. He says, he is my money maker. He makes money. He's a, he's a championship bloodline breeding stock. I can't get rid of him. He's too valuable. So to talk about the young man buying the farm. So I negotiated and came up with a fair price. And the old man talked to him about farming, the, you know, the, the hog farm. People would come in day with dump trucks of, of food that was beyond human consumption, but they'd be good for the hogs, the pit, you know, the feeding. And then he'd have to mix in some grain every day and get them the right balance of meal. It's a, but it's a profitable work. Proper, you know, it, it's a good farm. They make you money, put the work into it. It's the only thing you got to watch yourself around Brutus. Brutus, he'll kill you if he can. The old man, the young man says, "What? 
I want to give it a try. I can't live in the city no longer. I'm burned out. I want this farm. So he bought the farm and he goes out the first day to deal with Brutus. Now he was on the other side of the fence. But Brutus seen him and got mean looking, staring him down, kind of swaying back and forth, looking at the noose coming right down. So he picked up the hickory stick and he got into the pen and Brutus starts pawing on the ground, snorting, start looking mean, irritated, chewing his teeth and grunting. He almost looked like the devil, I guess. Anyways, the pig came running to him. He hit him on the head with a hickory stick. He hit him on the side a couple times. The pig stopped in his tracks and looked at him. He had an odd look in his face, his eyes. He just backed off, went back and laid down in the corner so the guy could do his business. Second day he went out there, same scenario. Brutus was uh, looking at him at the gate, real angry looking, you know, kind of moving back and forth, pawing on the ground again. Same thing happened again. He got in the pen with hickory stick. Brutus started coming to him. Wasn't trying to be mean to the pig. He was fighting for his survival. The pig stopped in his tracks and went down you know, in the corner and sat down. And that's happened the third day. The same thing. Fourth day, he went in, in there. Still had the same hickory rod in his hand just in case. And Brutus was not pawing on the ground that day. Bruce came up to him slow and walked up to him and lay down. He passed him on the head. Scratched his head. That felt so good to Brutus to have the human touch scratching his head. It felt flattened down on his all fours and bellied up. So the guy could scratch his belly. Nothing like a good belly scratch. After that, they became good friends. Every day that they'd uh, go to tend to the farm, Brutus would come running for him, to him, not aggravated, not angry. He just won a good scratch. Lay down next to the farm, and be on the ground. He'd be rolling around together and scratching and funning. And at the time of his life, Brutus became a friendly hog because the guy's tenacity and training him. This is a proper way to act. Through this training, they became friends. Well, the farmer came drove by one day to see how things were. And the young farmer was out there with the pigs laying down. Brutus, petting him. A farmer, he could not ever imagine anything like that could take place. He came up to the gate. He started laughing and, 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 and grinning. And, and oh, you guys, he laughed so hard, his false teeth fell out. Well, and that's a nice, happy ending. Long time ago, I was like Brutus myself. I was angry. I was arrogant. I struck. And I was angry at the whole world. Where could it came from? Nothing but the devil. That's right, the devil. And as I was strutting back and forth and pawing out the ground, man of the world, I could see that God was working with me inside my life. He allows me a few strikes, a couple of thrashings with situations and things that went wrong while I was not acknowledging him. Well, I submitted myself and laid down on the ground and, and I accepted the Lord's my Savior. He started scratching my head. Figure of speech. Grabbing my back. He ain't such a bad old guy now. He got me. And, and, and he started taking care of me. Physically touching my elements, my body. Bringing situations I had no control over. Bringing the situations to come to my favor. He's been good to me. I am no longer a Brutus myself. I'm a spirit filled creator that lives this love to Jesus. I want to tell you, my friends, Matthew 
chapter 6, verse 33, says, Seek ye the Lord, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All these things shall be given unto you, be added unto you, all these things. When you seek first God and his kingdom, all these things will come together, all these troubles you have, all the things that you face in your life. God wants to be your Lord. He wants to take care of you. I urge you today, take the initiative to ask for God to forgive you for your sins and walk in the Christian way of life. Read your Bible. Pray to God. He'd like to hear from you. I hope you have a very blessed week and God bless you.